Hello, my name is Josh Beck. I'm a uh, technology teacher in San Antonio, Texas. This is a uh, series of lessons designed for my uh, seventh grade class over the Blender. Um, by popular demand in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and build a game. Um, this is a standard maze game that can be found on the internet, but I do add a little twist at the end with a camera, something I just kind of discovered by looking at other games that have been developed by people out there. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to delete my standard cube. I'm going to click um, add mesh and I'm going to add a plane and I'm going to click S and I'm going to size that plane up. Okay, so um, I've got my plane now. I need to cut it into faces. Um, we're going to hit the W to bring up our specials menu and in this case I'm going to choose subdivide multi. What subdivide multi does is it allows us to cut a face or an object into even parts and in this case I've chosen number of cuts and the number of cuts you can see I'm going to go ahead and knock that up to 10. Um, so here we go W subdivide multi number of cuts 10 and that subdivides my plane into a 10 by 10 grid. Okay so now I'm going to hit A on the keyboard to deselect the entire plane and I'm going to start I'm going to go down to face select mode and I'm going to select the path that I want this maze to take. And I'm going to keep it fairly simple for the um, purposes of this tutorial. Here's one thing. I won't be able to hit play. And I won't be able to actually play this game in this screencast because uh, it's crashing my system when I hit P. And I'm running the screen uh, screencast software at the same time. You'll be able to hit uh, P in your program and uh, play the game, though, at any point. Okay, so now I have selected the floor of my maze. I'm going to go into side view by hitting 3. I'm going to hit G and I'm going to grab the maze and I'm going to drag it down all those selected faces. And if we rotate around you can see that I've developed a very simple looking maze type structure. Um, I'm going to hit A and I'm going to hit A again and I'm going to select the entire thing. Uh, I'm going to assign it now a color and I'm going to go to new and let's go ahead and let's give this uh, floor a blue color. Now the entire maze is blue. Um, I'm going to hit A and I'm going to deselect. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to start selecting faces again. And I'm going to reselect the floor of my maze. And we're going to give the floor a different color right now than everything else. All right, so by right clicking and holding down the shift key, I can select all the tiles that make up the floor of this maze. And I'm going to assign a new material here. So I have to click New down in my editing panel. And let's go ahead and make the floor yellow. OK, and then by picking yellow, just by hitting New and Yellow, nothing happened. So I have to actually assign that material to the selected uh, faces by clicking the Assign button. And now the floor has turned yellow. Let's go into Object Mode and take a look at it. Now, if you were to hit P right now and take a look at this, it would seem fairly flat in the uh, in the game engine. Um, if you want it to just basically look better within Blender, right here is your um, your shading, the draw type. Go ahead and pick Shaded. And if you change this button right here to Shaded, um, you'll get a much better effect uh, when you hit the P button and you actually look at what this maze looks like in the game engine. Highly recommend you choose Shaded right there when working with it. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into top-down mode and we're going to add a sphere. Um, I'm going to deselect everything first and I'm going to go to add mesh UV sphere. Okay. All right. So now we've got this UV sphere. Let's go into object mode here. And um, let's go ahead and assign this sphere a new color. Let's go ahead and make the sphere red. Let's take a look at it in object mode. There we go. Okay, so we've got a red sphere, yellow floor, and, uh, and a blue maze. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to start, uh, we need to make it so we can actually do something with this sphere. With the sphere selected, we're going to go in and we're going to start working with logic buttons. Over on the left in the panel, we have our logic buttons right there. F4, it says logic. Um, we're going to assign a series of keys that control this particular object. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make this sphere an actor. All right, this is an object, it says right there, that will be evaluated by the game engine. It's dynamic and it's a rigid body. So we have to select actor, dynamic, 
and rigid body right down there. I'll zoom in on it. Um, we're going to come over here. We're going to click sensors. And you can see the object that we've got available here is the sphere. Um, I'm going to choose to add a sensor. And where it says always, I'm going to select keyboard because I want this to be a keyboard sensor. Um, let's go ahead and map the W key this time, and we're going to make it go forward with the W key. Um, under controllers, we're going to hit click add, and we're just going to leave it the default and. And then under actuators, we're going to click add. All right. And this is a motion actuator. You can see right there it says motion. Um, this is where we define what the W key does. In this case, I'm going to choose the LINV parameter. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to a force of 10. We'll say, well, negative 10. Now what that's going to do is that's going to make the W key push this sphere negative 10 uh, with a force of negative 10 in a certain direction when I hit it, when I hit P in the game engine. Um, in order to make it all work, we need to draw lines. And we just, this is really simple. We need to connect um, our sensor to our controller and our actuator. Um, I'll be talking more about Python code as I uh, learn some new tricks and we'll actually code some Python in that uh, gives it a little bit more interactivity. Um, okay, so if we want to add more controllers, like the W is going to move it forward, negative 10, we'll say. Um, I could add a new sensor, all right, and by moving down, um, this would be a keyboard sensor. All right, I'm grabbing up there, and we'll, let's go ahead and make this one the A key, okay? And uh, it's you know the same type of type of thing applies here. I would add a new controller. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new motion. All right, and in this case, because it's the A key, let's go ahead over here in the left hand column, and let's put negative 10 for that value. All right, so by adjusting the values here. When you hit the P key, you're going to adjust the way the object behaves based on the keys that you're pressing. Okay, and I'm not going to set up a whole keypad right now. What we're going to do is, uh, the goal is to set up um, W, A, um, D, and S to move the ball forward, backwards, left, and right. Right now, we've just got um, W and A set up, except I haven't connected um, the A key yet, so let's just do that real quick. Um, I'm going to draw a line here that connects our controller to our actuator. Okay. If you were to hit P at this point, you would be able to hit the W if you had everything set up like this. Um, you would see the ball would drop into the maze, and you would be able to hit the W and the A key, and you would be able to physically affect the direction the ball is moving. Uh, we're going to add one more neat trick here. And uh, this is something that I just sort of figured out by watching someone else's game. Um, if you select the camera, now we need to know what the sphere is. The sphere is called Sphere, capital S. Let's take a look up here. Um, there's the name of the object right there, S-P-H-E-R-E -E with capital S. I'm going to select the camera. And uh, I'm going to add a new sensor to the camera. All right, I'm going to, and I'm going to leave it on always this time. I'm not going to make it a keyboard selection. I'm going to leave it on always. We always want that sensor to be active. I'm going to leave it at and, except this time, instead of a motion sensor here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a camera um, actuator. And I'm going to say the minimum distance, let's go ahead, the minimum distance that I want my camera to be from the object is 10. The maximum distance I want it to be is 10. And I want it to hover at a height above the object of, let's say, 7. OK. Um, and once again, we need to connect our camera object. And the object that we're going to work with here that we want the camera to attach to is the sphere. All right. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to make the camera, and I could take the camera and I could swing it all the way over here. Now when you start the game, the camera is going to automatically move up within um, 10 clicks, I guess you could say, of the sphere, and it'll hover at a height of 7 no matter where the sphere is. It's a pretty neat animation when you start the game to watch the camera sort of move up and pan in on your main object. So by setting up that camera, um, that, that set of moves right there under logic buttons for the camera and mapping it to the sphere, that, that's pretty nifty. Um, okay, so if you were to hit P right now, the game would play. Like I said, I can't do that for fear of crashing the blender based on 